On a majestic street corner That's a short time goal for most of them Cause most of them would rather expand their wings And hover over greater things That's what we call inspired flight By the pigeons that gotta eat pizza crust every night And let there be light was understood When a mic stand descended from up and above into the hood And if my face is worth a thousand words when it's scarred I would only hope that two of those are cocoa and butter To heal the wounds of the tissue scarred And mark the death of my wound Chest that beats in the opposite of the right. Let me know I got a breath left in this frigid, fragile capsule that allows you to fly south before the winter winds travel. I my hell, I made it. Wetsuit stitch so I can swim in elevators. Crazy wet through pits. I'm just a pigeon with one mile left. That doggy paddles through this bullshit ocean of death. And these rags to richest words will break bones like the assassination of two birds with one stone. That's why I don't associate with bird brains with their beats in the air. Pelicans with wide jaws that name From fish heads you'll get tossed in the flames And some archaeologists are find a skeletal frame After watching that, I just feel like the most boring presenter in history. My <laughs> word. Eugene Ankuma, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Henry. First, first of all, explain the get-up, okay? Because I can see a big uh, P-L-A-Y, play. That's right, yeah. Is that what you're really doing, playing right here? I'm playing, um, I'm just referencing, you know, theatre and just, just the idea of having fun. Right, okay. And is it true uh, that you've insured your hands for £1 million? Pounds? It is true, yes. Let's have a look at these hands. Because we need to know what £1 million pound hands... Okay, you're a woman. Have a look at these things. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about this insurance. £1 million, pounds, right. indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Mine are not insured at all. Okay. Now, the thing is, I mean, I, I deliberately said that you wear your art on, yes. on your sleeve, not just your yes. heart. And, and right. I, so, so can you explain what you're telling us with your, your get-up? Not just play, because it goes much deeper than play, doesn't That's it? That's right, yeah. I mean... Um, I'm a visual artist who just believes that uh, my work shouldn't just exist on the walls. Right. Um, it should extend to myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm part of the work. I'm not the work, but I'm part of the work. Right. And yeah, you know, the words you see on my paintings or my sculptures and my videos are basically extended to my look. And I would say that it's because I'm interested in avant-garde fashion. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's an extension of my work, basically. You know, avant-garde goes like this with mm -hmm. most people in Britain or elsewhere around the world. Sure. <laughs> 
yes. over their heads. <laughs> so um, what exactly are you trying to say to them? It's personalising myself. It's mm. looking at, you know, fashion through my eyes. Right. And expressing, you know, fashion um, through me, basically, you know, through the art. And the art sort of comes back to me and me, you know, back into the art. So we're, we're kind of one. If I can you started that. off like most uh, young people do when they embrace art, with drawing, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Drawing, what, sketching, painting. That's Explain. Right. Yes, um, I mean, I've, I've been obsessed with drawing and painting for absolutely, you know, ages. This is like when you were seven, uh, eight years old? Seven, eight years old. Yeah. Um, you know, my teachers used to be very, very surprised at, you know, what I would draw at school. Um, they will give us books to, to copy things from, and I would copy them, but I would also add my own mm. little bits and pieces and improvise it and take it in a whole different place. Um, so, you know, that's, that's when they notice that, um, you know, he has extra imagination. And now, <laughs> are these the teachers who were kind of uh, educating you in um, North London, where you've lived, or also Ghana, where you've also lived? Yes, this was in Ghana, actually. Um, okay. I was born here, as you know, some of your viewers may know, yeah. and um, I lived in Ghana till I was 13. So, yeah, you know, it, it all started in Ghana, and obviously in Ghana you have you know, plenty to look at, you know, plenty of raw visual inspiration. So uh, I just used to draw everything. And how uh, much did the Ghanaian response differ from the, the English response? Because I'm sure there must be a, quite a di distinction and a difference. Most definitely. Um, you could say that in Ghana, people were... If you were to walk down the Kojo Thompson Road in <laughs> central Accra, like this, mm. people would, I don't know, they would try to commit to you. I don't know. <laughs> what would they try to, or would they look at you and go, wow, this guy's amazing? They will think I'm amazing, but I'm sure they'll also think I'm mad. Yes, that's what um, I'm saying. Which goes hand in hand, <laughs> most definitely. Um, I guess from that perspective, you could say that um, you know, Londoners and people in England are a bit more open to, uh -huh. to, to what is possible creatively. Okay. And just tell us about how your career has developed now, you know, into your 20s, etc. What's been happening? Um, I've just been you know, working hard since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And luckily for me, lots of people have you know, seen my works. And they have encouraged me and passed it on to other people. Um, and other people have brought you know different opportunities to me. So in terms of exhibiting my work, yeah. um, showing it in galleries, you know, in prestigious places, yeah. um, people have invited me to be part of you know music videos. Um, so it's just been a. Just looking at some images now, right now. Cause take us through some of these images. Okay, this one. Yeah. Um, that's that's called the fighter. Um, right, okay. It's just showing myself as a person who's just ready to fight with you know all life's challenges. Mm -hmm. um, that's a tribal um, dress I made as yeah. part of my um, tribal series of works. So you're a fashion designer as well, of course. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's part of my tribal um, sculptures, um, and it's called um, Amadeus okay. and Icarus. And the next one right here? This is part of what I'm making now, which is called the cover-ups. Maybe and subject to copyright. Are we okay showing this? Yes, you are, yes. Okay, very good, very good. <laughs> um, it's just referencing Google. This particular yes. piece um, is part of a new series of works I'm making, okay. um, which is about, you know, um, young people are so judged that um, their personality is drained out of them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's no expression, as you can see. Excellent. Um, Where would they have been exhibited? Where? Um, a lot of those have been exhibited in, you know, all over the place in Germany and America. Okay. Um, a lot of, them, a lot of them have been bought, um, and I'm currently sort of, you know, putting together um, some works for, for for a couple of shows, mm -hmm. probably in April. And what's the environment like for the young British artists right now? Because we keep being told that we're living through a period of austerity and the arts are really going to suffer. And you That's hear right. about all kinds of organisations that will yes. probably disappear when the settlement comes through yeah. from the Arts Council of England in the next few months or that's so. Right. I mean, are you keeping an eye on this because you might be affected? Most definitely. I mean, it's, it's something that's very important um, in terms of funding that comes through for shows, Yeah. Um, in terms of some young people I work with, which I help. Mm -hmm. um, I, I help them in, in, in terms of them expressing themselves through, through art as well. So back to your question, yeah. it will affect those type of things. But um, I guess, you know, we're just all gearing ourselves up to, to just persevere and just work through. Mm. I'm just wondering if a lie with his connections can find mm. you a very wealthy, well-endowed <laughs> West African patron. Yes. I mean, would some of the multimillionaires, some of the government ministers, some of the governors mm. of states in Nigeria or elsewhere be interested in what Eugene is doing? What's interesting, I think probably more interesting is because there is a there's a rapidly growing, very healthy um, kind of art sector yeah. happening in Nigeria. I mean, it's, it's really very vibrant now in Lagos and it's, it's, it's growing and it's fantastic. And the, the, what I think a lot of people would tap into, okay. this is not patrons, but actually sure. the people you really actually want to yes. work with and bring into your work um, are those people who would be inspired by protest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something I noticed about some yeah. of the work and there's, yes. a, there's a theme that seems to yes. run through this, which is right. 
reaction to judgment and, and, and protest and so yeah. on. So I, 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 I think definitely there would be there would be a market. What about and, and, I think, and I think it's the right market. What about yeah. Natalie's a high-powered Caribbean connection? Well, I was I was about to say a, a lot of your very famous fellow artists have yeah. found Trinidad to be inspirational. Really, uh, Chris Ophelia now. Oh, yes, of course, Trinidad. yes, he does. Yes, and um, it's it's an area that's always celebrated art and literature. And yes. I am curious. In the video we saw, okay. there was a piece where you were dressed in bandages and that's burning right. something. What was yes. that about? Um, one of the things I play with is, is the idea of identity. Right. Um, I mean, I look like this today, but, um, you know, probably in about six months, I'll look different. Right. Um, and it's the idea of, you know, guess what he is, guess what he's going to make next. Um, and it's also the idea of, you know, if something is covered up, you want to unveil it. Right. So yeah. it's, it's, it's playing around with, with all those ideas and, and just saying to people, you know, guess, guess what he's going to make next. Talking of what? Talking of which? Uh, what's in this box? Oh, it seems to be empty. Oh, this. It is empty. Um, this, is a, this is a new box, um, which I made not long ago. Okay. And um, obviously, you know, a box represents, can, can fit into the idea of travel. Akra, Takaradi, right. this That's right. Yeah. Um, this is the, 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 the villain from the film, um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. That's right, right. yes. And right. Um, it's just talking about the idea and perhaps, you know, the dangers of traveling. So you have, you know, Akra to Takaradi, which yes. is in Ghana. Um, and then you, here you have, you know, this dodgy looking character. <laughs> and it's almost like, you know, the piece you have with this little boy at the back. Yeah. Um, with his father, you know, lying on the bed, kind of reading, calm. But you have this to contradict that piece, really. Okay, so someone's saying, you know, um, be careful. <laughs> well, you're a front of ideas, and let's hope mm -hmm. they find a home during this period of austerity. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Eugene, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Wonderful. And that's it for Shoot the Messenger for another week. And remember, you can watch it all again online by going to our website, voxafrica.com. Just time enough to thank my guests one more time, Natalie Williams. La Yahaya, uh, Colin Grant has now departed us, and Eugene Ankoma. And of course, thanks very much to you for watching. Till the same time next week, goodbye.